can you get rid of the aviation place? And someone at Nuki has gone, oh, we can't really, because it's really good for the community and everybody loves it. And there's like 60 retired dudes that go there all the time. And they really like it. And the guy's gone, hmm, what about if I give you this? And the guy at Cornwall Council has gone, oh, yeah, go on then, we'll kick them out. How on earth were they going to move 20 aircraft and all their stuff in four days on a bank holiday weekend? Good afternoon, we have some crazy light in this video because I'm filming in the dying hours of Easter Monday. Now, what you should be doing with your Easter weekend is relaxing with your family, eating some food, eating some chocolate, and maybe going to a classic car show. What you shouldn't be doing is moving 20 vintage aircraft because you're being kicked out of your premises with nowhere to go. What on earth is going on at Cornwall Aviation Heritage Centre down in Newquay? This has been sent to me, I've just looked into it, and it seems like it's absolutely insane. So let's see if we can take a quick look at what on earth is going on at Newquay Airport. So, a little bit of background. Cornwall Aviation Heritage Centre was created by local people, it's privately funded, and it pays commercial rents to Cornwall Council. So, this is at Newquay Airport, owned effectively by Cornwall Council. So, the Aviation Heritage Centre pays some rent to be there. It's effectively a small museum with workshops and a lot of retired people go there to basically just enjoy themselves. It's a brilliant place to educate people about the brilliant aviation history of this country and they have some fantastic exhibits. They're covering their costs from what I can see. They are actually paying their rents, but Cornwall Council wants some out of the airport. Why? I'm not quite sure. Cornwall Aviation Heritage Centre is a unique and popular growing tourism heritage and education centre. As I said, it's at Cornwall Airport near to the new Spaceport project. Going to get into that in a little minute. It's locally owned and operates with no support from Cornwall Council, who are owners of the airport and they are the landlords. For the past seven years, the Aviation Heritage Centre's owners, staff and volunteers have worked night and day to create something truly unique and very special for Cornwall. The result is an award-winning, top-rated visitor destination and major aerospace STEM, S-T-E-M, education centre with industry and education collaborations within and outside Cornwall. So the Aviation Centre is a cool thing for Cornwall to have. Cornwall Council have terminated the lease and given a deadline to vacate by the 31st of March. Just gone, obviously. With 20 plus airframes of all sizes and thousands of exhibits, suitable alternative locations are few and need to be close to the airport, obviously, because they're aeroplanes and it wouldn't make sense if it wasn't close to the airport. And relocation would cost hundreds of thousands. Cornwall Council committed to assist the Heritage Centre to relocate the operation, but have since refused to make good on these commitments. And for more than 10 months, the council have refused to even discuss any relocation proposals and funding sources. With no options for relocation and with Cornwall Council refusing to help, the Cornwall Aviation Heritage Centre, the only aerospace museum in Cornwall, Devon and Dorset will have to close forever. All this amazing stuff will be lost, jobs will be destroyed, valuable and historic aircraft of all sizes will have to be scrapped because of the prohibitive cost of road transport and the opportunity to inspire and educate Cornwall's future generations will be lost. 60 dedicated veteran and retired volunteers will lose a vital part of their lives. Cornwall Council should be welcoming this unparalleled opportunity for Cornwall uh, as a crucial part of the levelling up agenda and they should be encouraging and nurturing the Cornwall Aviation Heritage Centre in its bid to provide the county with a national quality aerospace destination and a centre for learning at no cost to the county. Instead, Cornwall Council is destroying it. It's all looking a bit end of the world around me right now, isn't it? So what we have is we have a lovely little aviation heritage centre that's been running for a number of years that is staffed by volunteers, that is loved by visitors, that is, as far as I can tell, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, covering its costs, and Cornwall Council are turning around and saying, nah, you're out of here. They are effectively making them homeless because it's extremely difficult to relocate 20 aircraft at short notice. And that obviously is causing some major stress for all the people that are involved. So let's have a little look about what is going on. I've got some BBC News articles to look at and I want to ask some questions about Nuki Airport as a whole, if that's okay with you. 
background. Nuki Airport is a small airport situated pretty much at the top of Watergate Bay. My experience of Nuki Airport is pretty much from sitting in the water on a surfboard and watching all the planes. That's about as far as my experience with Nuki Airport goes. I'm going to get into that in a minute. Where's everybody flying to and from? From Nuki. I don't get it. From Nuki, you can fly to London, Gatwick, Stansted or Heathrow. Okay, I understand that. Maybe, you know, Nuki to London. You can go to East Midlands, Manchester, Newcastle, Humberside, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Aberdeen and the Isles of Scilly. Is there really enough air traffic to and from all of those places to justify having a commercial airport at Nuki? Don't shoot me down in the comments, just give me your thoughts. You can also fly from Nuki to Dublin, Belfast, Faro in Portugal, Alicante and Malaga in Spain, Dusseldorf in Germany, Zurich in Switzerland and Copenhagen in Denmark. I used to think that was in Sweden, but it's not. It's in Denmark. <laughs> if, it's, if they've moved it to Sweden, let me know in the comments. Small airport doesn't do a huge amount of flights. On the premises of the airport, you can also rent out spaces as well. There's other businesses that operate from the airport complex, including the Aviation Centre. The Aviation Centre has... A BAE Harrier, English Electric Canberra, English Electro Lightning, Hawker Hunter, Hawker Seahawk, Panavia Tornado F3, Panavia Tornado GR4, a Vickers Varsity, a Hawker Hunter T8, a BAE Hawk T1, a BAC 1-11, a Bolton Paul Balliol T2, a Vickers VC10 and more than 1,500 model aircraft. So it's quite a significant size thing, the Cornwall Aviation Heritage Centre. So BBC News, 1st of September 2022, an aviation heritage in Cornwall says it will close after its lease was terminated by the council. Cornwall Aviation Centre will have to vacate premises at Newquay Airport uh, in March 2023. So this is from September 22. Uh, a spokesperson for Cornwall Council said it was not responsible for the operation of a private business. So, were they failing to pay the rent? I don't know. I'm trying to read between the lines to work out what's actually gone on in the back rooms here. I think they were they were covering their costs. It's not necessarily a money thing. It's just that Cornwall Council want them off the premises. Now, why would they possibly want them off the premises? 4th of July 2022, BBC News. UK satellite launch. Everything now is about getting to Cornwall. All eyes are now on Newquay in Cornwall for the first ever satellite launch from UK soil. So this is last summer. Sir Richard Branson's US company, Virgin Orbit, successfully placed another seven spacecraft in orbit from California. Yada, yada, yada. So it all went on in Cornwall. And he said he was going to set up a Newquay airport. And they started to set up a Newquay airport and then they went bust so who are or who were virgin orbit well i took a look on the website and virgin orbit offer dedicated services and flexible launches for too long launchers have treated small satellite customers like second class citizens i hate that when i'm trying to get my satellite launched and the person who's offering to launch it for me is just treating me like a second class citizen it happens to me all the time with Virgin Orbit, you'll get first-class service at a fair cost, so you can take full control of your satellite's journey to space. Again, too many times I've been trying to launch a satellite into space, and I just haven't been able to get first-class service or a fair cost, and I haven't felt like I've been in full control of my satellite's journey to space. Who are these people? The beauty of our mobile launch pad is we can fly wherever you need, wherever you need to go. Even hitting 20 flights per year isn't enough for us. We'll be pushing to do even more. Nice one, Richard. 8th of April, 2023, Yahoo News. Uh, Starlink satellites fall from the sky and Virgin Orbit goes bust. Speaking of crashing to the ground, Sir Richard Branson, serial entrepreneur, billionaire philanthropist and a guy who really knows how to set up a photo op has announced that his satellite business, Virgin Orbit, is calling it quits. So basically, Virgin Orbit folded, went into um, administration. And two days before that article went live, on the 6th of April, the Cornwall Aviation Museum was given an impossible deadline. Why do I feel like all of these things are connected? Call me a cynic, but it seems like what's happened here is someone at Richard Branson's operation has said, we need more space at Nuki Airport. Can you get rid of the aviation place? And someone at Nuki has gone, oh, we can't really, because it's really good for the community and everybody loves it. And there's like 60 retired dudes that go there all the time. And they really like it. And the guy's gone, hmm, what about if I give you this? And the guy at Cornwall Council has gone, oh, yeah, go on then. We'll kick them out. 
An aviation museum has been told it must leave its site at Newquay Airport by the 11th of April. So on the 6th of April, a press release came out from the Aviation Museum saying we've been told that we need to go by the 11th of April. An impossible deadline. Cornwall Council said the museum had been asked in October 2021 to finalise their plans and leave the site, notwithstanding the fact that the press release from the Aviation Centre said that the council had refused to even discuss relocation proposals for 10 months. The museum, which has 20 aircraft, including two tornadoes and a Harrier jump jet, said the council had told it on Tuesday, this is last week, that it must clear the entire site and move thousands of valuable and vulnerable heritage exhibits by the 11th of April. That's tomorrow. It's Easter Monday today. It's been a bank holiday. How on earth were they going to move 20 aircraft and all their stuff in four days on a bank holiday weekend? The director of the museum, Richard Spencer Breeze, said clearing the site by the 11th of April over the Easter weekend is completely impossible. The deadline is ridiculous. He said the council seemed committed to seeing this museum close forever. And he added, we offered the once in a lifetime chance for Cornwall to have a unique all year state of the art aerospace attraction and education hub. All they had to do was let us stay where we are for another eight to 12 months. So from what I understand, They'd lined up the funding, they'd lined up a new location to go to, but it just wasn't ready yet. They're paying rent in the meantime, and as far as I can tell, correct me in the comments, covering their costs, but the council wants them gone. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Cornwall Council said in a statement the centre has had since October 2021 to finalise their plans and leave the site. And I've written next to that, why? Why were they asked to leave the site? This is questions that I haven't been able to find on the internet. Um, the council and airport had agreed to store several aircraft for free. All right, fair enough. Leaving the museum to remove the smaller items. Council said it had also provided support on planning and funding. Again, that's disputed by the centre itself. And said the airport was subsidised by the Cornish taxpayer. The council was committed to develop the airport in a way which minimises this subsidy and continues to develop the site as a key part of Cornwall's transport and business infrastructure. The council also added that it wanted to bring in high value aerospace businesses to the region, specifically businesses which require airside access. So again, here we have it. What they want to do is move out this nice archaic museum that does stuff for the community and does stuff for the people that work there and helps the local people and bulldoze it out of the way for high-value aerospace businesses like Richard Branson's Orbit plan, which went down the toilet because there wasn't any money in it. Brilliant. That's definitely not short-sighted from the Cornish Council, is it? So it seems to me a bit odd that if Richard Branson's operation has gone bump, and if they were hanging their hopes on the fact that he was perhaps going to take over the land, the buildings, the space... Why have they continued to kick them out now that that's not happening? Is there something else going on? Is there something else going on at the airport in Newquay that the council know about that they don't want you or me to know about? I don't know. Tell me in the comments. Wasn't there some stuff about aliens in Cornwall? Isn't there loads of tunnels underneath um, Cooled Rose as well? Maybe it's something to do with the tunnels at Cooled Rose. Maybe it's something to do with where they're housing lots of people that are coming across the channel. I don't know. Those are just conspiracy theories. Don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Tell me what you think. Then what we have is some comments from people on Facebook. And comments on Facebook always go one of two ways. They're always absolutely brilliant or utter drivel. But I've highlighted some brilliant ones here. A chap called Jonathan says, makes me wonder if someone on the council is in for a brown envelope, as they used to say. Just goes to prove you should never trust a councillor. 18 likes on that one as well. So people clearly agree. A chap called Stuart, sinister and suspicious behaviour of the authority. Aerospace Heritage Centre should exist to celebrate our engineering, provide STEM inspiration and provide artefacts for students to study. A proven approach and opportunities for advancement of design materials. Great comment, Stuart. You're absolutely right. That's what these places are for. They're cool. They're a part of our history and our heritage. All these old planes, they all had significance. And it's nice to go and see them and understand what they're all about and learn more about them so you can then maybe work in planes one day. It's good for kids. Paul says, they seem to put every obstacle in the museum's way. I'm absolutely disgusted with the council's handling of this. From my brief amount of research, I have to agree with you, Paul. It does seem like that's what happened. 
Uh, Dick. Dick says, I've heard both sides of this. You get a different story from people who support Cornwall Council, but it still doesn't add up. And when you ask awkward questions like, why are Cornwall Council reneging on agreements already made? It all goes quiet. Cornwall Council's case seems to have more holes than a colander. And I appreciate the alliteration that you use there, dick. Nice one. Man after my own heart. I like a good dick. Um, <laughs> just proves Cornwall Council cannot be trusted, says Claire. Fair play, Claire. Clive says, I've always thought that councils represent what their public wanted. Not so in this case, judging by the amount of people who signed the petition. And when I last looked, it was coming up to 50,000. There's only about 12 people that live in Cornwall on the off-season. So that's a pretty decent number. And then Graham Wood says, mad decision by Cornwall Council, short-sighted and selfish. The spaceport plan is all but dead in the water, with Virgin Orbit going bust. What is in the mind of these councillors? And then my favourite bit, has anyone tried to contact Prince William as he's taken over from the King? So obviously the King owns most of Cornwall, well the King, Prince Charles. Uh, owns most of Cornwall, the whole Duchy of Cornwall thing. And I believe Prince William's now taken over that. So Graham there is under the delusion that the people in charge actually care about the small people over which they reign. They don't. Once you realise that, everything else sort of ticks into place. Paul Smith says, the museum has done everything in its power to relocate meetings, emails, telephone calls. I mean, everything other than picking a plane up and walking it across the field. Only two weeks ago, the museum was preparing to open on the 9th of April. Everything was being prepared to welcome visitors back, though it seems Cornwall Council only had to grant permission to open to trade. So they basically had to just tick a box or sign something that says, yeah, you're good to go for this season, and they wouldn't do it. And opening to trade would have helped them raise more funds for the new location that they were planning to move to, only to have the carpet pulled out from under their feet right at the very end. The Cornwall Aviation Heritage Centre is the only company in the surrounding uh, area being targeted by Cornwall Council. Gate guards, Cornwall hot tubs, private storage for private aircraft are all untouched. So why is it just the museum? Again, this comes back to some of the things I've been hinting at earlier on in this video. It will be remembered as one of the biggest travesties in the aviation circles of preserving our British aviation heritage. Absolutely correct, Paul. That does seem to be a, a huge error of judgment by Cornwall Council based on what it's doing for aviation history. Um, they obviously have some sort of ulterior motive. And finally, and finally, Simon says, Cornwall Council has been incompetently wasting all the grant monies and other funding. £19 million resulting in no Saints Trail, apart from a small section between Gunavaran and Bollingy. Bollingy? Sorry if I got that one wrong. Um, don't know much about that, but that also sounds like an interesting subject for me to turn my uh, investigative Volvo to. Cornwall Council giving our money to Virgin Space Project, when in essence it is a commercial venture for which we should have charged them for. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right, Simon. I, again, don't understand this one. Big company turns up in a small town and says, we're going to start operating your small town. And the council goes, great, how much can we pay you to be here? Should be the other way around. Big company goes to small town and says, ah, oh, we like it here. It's got everything we need. Here's what we're going to pay you to operate from where you live. Finally, Cornwall Council's behaviour shows how incompetent they are and their total lack of business skills, project management, etc. They need sacking. I think, Simon, you're wrong on that last point. I think there's something else going on here. There's clearly something a bit more untoward. Unless I've missed a massive elephant in the room, like the Aviation Centre was losing money hand over fist and being propped up by Cornwall Council and constantly going to them for bailouts, but I'm not aware that that's the case. But correct me in the comments... The whole thing seems mental. I'm not going to drive to Cornwall tonight and help move 20 aircraft and 1,500 model aircraft. And I don't expect you to, but I also don't expect them to have to do it. There is a link in the video description to sign a petition to help out. They're not even asking for any money. They just want to get some voices and some people behind the campaign. So please lend your signature, just a digital one, and, um, and see if we can help save the Cornish Aviation Centre. Thanks for watching my video. I can't believe that I make a video about planes and not a single plane goes over. Every time I park up to make a video about cars, it's plane after plane after plane after plane, and I have to keep cutting it all out of the audio. Today, it would have been perfect, and no one's flying.
What do they think it is? Jesus' birthday or something? No, that's the other one, isn't it? <sighs> I'm feeling a bit ill today. The magpie over there, is that good luck? Been in the forest of the Dean today looking for big cats. Going to do a video on that again soon. I'm going to borrow an electric car and I'm going to go look for big cats because the big cats won't hear it coming. And then I'll catch one on dash cam and prove to the world that big cats actually exist. Hey, there is a link to this video, actually, because, you know, Beast of Bodmin, not far from Nuki. So there we go. A big conclusion, bringing all of my favourite things together. Museums, trying to do some good, and big cats in the British countryside. <laughs> all of Jeff's favourites. It's like a selection box. Easter link as well. That'll do now. I've got to stop talking. Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, we haven't had a code word for a long time, have we? Uh, selection box. Oh, that's a Christmas joke. Jeff, I think that's a Christmas joke. There you go. There's your code word. Thanks, everybody. Jeff buys cars. Still, YouTube's most boring car channel.